Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode, and I'm here with Stephen Dowling from Cosmo Photo. From Cosmo Photo, you may well have seen his website. It's a fantastic website for anybody who shoots film, for anybody who's interested in former Soviet Union cameras. I think you're quite big on that, and other stuff as well. The, the full sandpit of film photography, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it really is worth a look. Check it out. I'm going to put the link right here. And Stephen also has a YouTube channel, which you can check out also. And that channel is called... Cosmo Photo. Cosmo Photo. So check out Cosmo Photo. And Cosmo Photo are doing some really good work with film photography, keeping it alive, keeping it working, keeping the interest buoyant, and capitalizing on the interest that's already there in this amazing resurgence that we have. Which, even in the, the short time, the probably 10 years since I started Cosmo Photo, I'm amazed at how many more people are shooting film. I, I think I got the sense around 2017 that something was changing. There, there really seemed to be something that was a, just a bit more than the usual players going, oh yeah, no, film's not dead, almost as a sort of defensive reflex. Yes. I, I noticed on my commute into work during what was would be you know, the school or university holidays that there would be a different kid every day with a film camera who obviously they all had the same idea which was oh, I'm going to go into the centre of London and shoot film right. and they all had different cameras and they all you know were looking at their cameras on the train and looking at the film and it was like okay yeah this is I didn't see this two years ago mm. it, 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 it was a gradual thing I think from you know to, without getting melodramatic but sort of the dark days of like the late 2000s in the sense of 2000 to 2009 when yeah, yeah. you know people were, were sort of racing to get to digital and a lot of stuff was just being pushed out the way you know, yes. some major players gave up film altogether you know films that were you know the heartbeat of, of film throughout the 90s yeah, yeah. and 2000s which were being discontinued and so it seemed like a quite a negative environment to be in, mm. no pun intended. That really seems to have changed in the last five years. Mm. And, it, and I think part of that is is oddly like digital media. You know, everything from Instagram to YouTube to uh, you know Flickr before it I think was an obvious one. Yes. Just just helping sort of spread the word about film and film cameras. That that had a seismic effect which I don't think people had really appreciated because it suddenly made film and the medium of, of film relevant to people who never grew up in For me, the sort of resurgence in film feels like something really progressive. It, it, it isn't sort of, to, to use an art term, it's not stuckists. It's not people of our generation going, well, I don't want to learn digital because sure. uh, yes. bec because I learnt this and that, that's all I want to do. It is younger people who who didn't use it the first time around, who didn't experience it, who didn't have it as part of their everyday. If you look at a lot of cameras now, they you know, with a few remarkable exceptions, they they do sort of tend to follow a, a similar blueprint mm. and that's not something that you can say about film photography except maybe you know the compacts and, and prosumer SLR trend of the 90s you go back you know the preceding 90 years it's just such an extraordinary rich field of design and ergonomics and engineering and and sometimes just harebrained concepts that didn't quite work but were interesting enough. I think film had, just has this remarkable 
staying power because it's it's an incredibly tactile object. But that's even before you start talking about the, the cameras, which really are, you know, when, when camera designers got it right, they really are design classic. They're beautiful things yeah. in themselves. Yeah. Now, talking about film, I can see we've got some of your film cheekily stowed away over here. We do. Let's so have a look. So this is the first film that came out from, from Cosmophoto, which is uh, Mono. It's, um, it's a, 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 a straight bat name, to use a cricket, cricketing term. Um, so Mono was the first Cosmophoto film that we released in 2017, which is uh, a black and white film made by uh, Foma Bohemia in the Czech Republic. So it's one of their existing emulsions. It's 100 ISO, so you don't need to be a, a rocket scientist to work out which uh, which film it is. Sure. But this is uh, a film that I'd shot a lot over the last 15 years or so. Right. And uh, I really loved it. It, it. it has a real warmth to it, which is, mm. seems like an odd thing to say for a black and white film. But because it has a traditional grain structure, it has... Um, slightly old-fashioned look. Do you know what? I love the packaging you've done on here. Thank you. Absolutely Jesus. love it. Let's have a close-up. I'll probably do a still shot of it in a way, but let's have a close-up. Oh, isn't that fantastic packaging? It's kind of space-age, it's kind of 50s, it's it's all that optimism of the mid-20th century. The, the great leap forward. Yeah, so yeah, the white heat of technology. So that the, the design was done by a, a wonderful designer that I used to work with in my day job. So my day job, I work at the BBC, and I work with a guy called uh, Martin Duncan, um, who's a graphic designer, who goes by the name My Mate Does Art. Okay. And so when I had the um, idea of doing a film, which came from Bellamy Hunt, uh, from Japan Camera Hunter, when he surprised the world by announcing his first black and white film in 2016, I was just, A, absolutely blown away, thinking, that's amazing, how did you do this? And B, thinking, I would love to do something similar. And I already knew Bellamy a little bit. I mean, we'd never met, but um, I'd written some pieces for his blog, and he'd been very um, uh, welcoming and encouraging. And I, I sent him a message saying, look, congrats. Um, that's an amazing thing. I wrote, you know, I'll, I'll buy some film. And it's, like, it's got me thinking I'd love to do something similar. And he went, well, great. Uh, I can tell you all the things not to do because I made a load of mistakes. Oh, so he nice. was like instantly helpful and yeah, yeah. Uh, like a huge, a huge reason why um, Mono came out in the first place. So, right. so props yeah. both to Martin Duncan but also to Bellamy for, for getting it out there. At the moment it's black and white film. In years to come it could be coloured. Yes, because indeed. I think this industry, we're at the cusp of this industry changing. Yeah, I think so too. I don't think it's going to stop. I think it's going to be smaller producers, boutique producers, as you say. Black and white film, big market for black and white film. Colour film also, I think that's coming, as you say. In fact, I think I read on your website somebody's produced an entirely new colour film. Yeah, so that. 2022, this is what I was alluding to when I said that the sort of resurgence of, of 2017 seems quite quaint. Um, I mean, we're looking at, a, at several colour emulsions, new colour emulsions coming out. Right. Um, so, for instance. That's really exciting. That's incredibly exciting. You know, colour film chemistry is really complicated. It's. You know, when, when Kodak was at its peak in the early 2000s, before digital really got going, 80% of the people that were employed by Kodak were research scientists. Really? Wow. They were, they were working in R&D. Gosh. And, you know, that's stuff that needs, like, master's degrees. Oh, yes. yes. And, and, you know, because they were working out the best ways to, especially with colour film, 
you know, the, the colour dyes and um, the chemistry needed to record colours accurately. That's a, an extraordinarily complicated process and that was in danger of dying out in the 2000s because, you know, the, the, the sort of rush to digital really upended film production. Yeah, yeah. Film, yeah. and once the tech's gone, it's gone. It's, a really good example is when Nikon bought out the remakes of their rangefinders oh, yes. in the early 2000s, the like the, yeah. uh, the SP and the SM2. Mm. Um, they had to bring people out of retirement to make those cameras. Oh, really? Because, and, and this was in a stage when they were still making a lot of film cameras. Yes. They weren't making rangefinders. And they had to bring people out of retirement to to educate their current engineers and like, no, you have to think about this or no, you, you're doing this the wrong way. And, and that's how those, those anniversary cameras were made. They couldn't have been made without the input of the older master technicians. Oh, that's really interesting. And colour photography was almost at that stage. If, if Kodak had gone under, if Fuji hadn't you know, and I know Fuji gets a lot of stick, but if Kodak and Fuji had walked away from it, I think the game would have been over. I'm actually less worried about the camera repair side because I just think there's there's a new generation of kids who are really, really good engineers and will solve it. 3D printing using metal powders is is the wave of the future. You no longer have to route through old market stalls or you know sure. poor three for eBay listings to find to find a you know parts or, or spares camera. Mm. You can just make the part you need. At some point someone other than like a Leica and Lomography have to make a a new film camera. Oh absolutely. And, yes. and I'm sure somebody will at one if, if the current so lift continues. What what does that camera look like? So I, uh, I should say that I'm not including in that Leica and Lomography all of the various small players who are doing pinhole and large format uh, cameras because that's a really buoyant and healthy part of the film market at the moment is you know, people like Intrepid and Chroma Camera who are making new bodies for large format lenses. Large format, you would have thought that would have died. That's in really rude health. Oh, it's in great health. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I shoot on film cameras. They're not just things to put on a shelf. I, I don't shoot on digital cameras. I shoot, all of my shooting is on film you cameras. You never shoot digital. No, no. And, and again, that's not a, a I shoot film because it's better. I just don't have that uh, relationship with digital cameras. It's like, I shoot stuff on my phone, you know, if I need to send something to my wife or, um, you know, record something. Yeah, the, the cameras on your, your phones are, are fantastic. Mm. But mm. if I want to take photos, I shoot on film. I look at um, eBay a lot, and you can still buy expired films. And you know, in ten years' time, they'll all be gone. So you know, now is the time to be buying a couple of rolls of Agfa Ultra One Hundred. Now is the time to buy kids. Um, that's, that's my bias too, um, because you know that they might not still be capable of taking images. So it is that thing of like. Hey, I'm, gonna, I'm going to Italy on holiday with my wife uh, later this month, so I'll take a couple of emulsions, just because, you know, it, and, and not in a sort of social media, like, blowing my own trumpet away, but it's like, maybe this is the last time this site will be, or this street will be shot on this kind of film. We've not seen the other film. Let's see the other film, Agent Shadow. It's got a fantastic name. I love the name of this film. So Agent Shadow, I'm going to hold it, hopefully you can still see me here. So this is the new film which uh, Cosmophoto launched 
um, via Kickstarter last year. Again, it's an existing motion, um, but this time not made in the Czech Republic, made in the UK. Um, but it's uh, a film which it's kind of gone under the radar how good this film is shot at uh, higher ISO. So it's a 400 ISO film, but you can shoot it at 1600, 3200, 6400. So um, we push it to 6400. 6400. So I did, um, and I'll, I'll send uh, you the pictures so you can put them in the video. Sure, I'd love to. Um, you can push this film up to 6400 in the right developers and you get a wonderful atmospheric uh, black and white picture with the full graduation of tones from black to white and with atmospheric but still restrained grain. Um, so for people who like shooting documentary style, reportage style, we're shooting when the light's a bit lower, indoors at 6400 if you can meet it like that. Um, yeah. Oh, I want to shoot some of this film right now. Well, <laughs> well I have a couple of roles for you, one, two. Um, so this is uh, Cosmophoto's second film. So. So we released mono in 2017 in 35 mil, and then we did it in 120 in 2019. And this has taken about three years to get together. Um, what we did, uh, because I took it to Kickstarter, because I needed to get a certain amount of money to do the minimum uh, order. So I wanted to do something that nobody had ever done with uh, a film release like this which was uh, to do uh, a graphic novel with it. So, um, if you uh, pledged on Kickstarter, you could either buy the film at a, at a very wallet-friendly price, or you could buy a, uh, a box which was made to look like a briefcase. Right. And when you opened the box, you had five rolls of film and a, a comic, and the comic was called uh, the 36 frames and it told the tale of Agent Shadow uh, in this unnamed city, probably sort of Cold War era. Oh, yeah, um, nice. And what happens to him over this night, sort of chased by these unnamed assailants. Uh, a very sort of film noir, third man um, kind of. That um, sounds plot very device. cool. At, at the moment, Cosmophoto is a brand that is using a, existing emulsions. Mm. So, how do we make it different? And for instance, with this film, it's a film that it turns out is really, really, really good for shooting in low, low light. People don't shoot it. So, this is Cosmophoto's gift to the analog community. It's like, look at this film. In a different lens. So we've got something here with a with a with a hidden talent yeah. that hasn't yeah. been used. Absolutely. So this film, this is a four hundred ISO film. This one. This one. Yeah. So four hundred ISO film, and you can shoot it at six thousand ISO. Six thousand four hundred. Six thousand four hundred. Wow, that's even cooler. And it works really nicely in low light. Apen Shadow is a bit like some of the Lomography films, where Lomography just brought a, a different aesthetic to the way people use films. Yes. Now, you know, they weren't making their own films up until recently, so they were working with films made by Agfa and Kodak and Foma Bohemia. But they were just saying, well, treat, treat our films a bit differently. Put them in an old camera without testing it. Like, yeah, shoot yeah. from the hip. You know, those ten rules of yeah. lomography, which, again, a lot of the more traditional crowds are a little sniffy about. I'm absolutely happy with lomographies. Uh, Me too, absolutely. I, I wrote a piece for the BBC several years ago where you know I asked the question did lomography save film photography and I, I think they partly did again like part of what Cosmophoto is about is I want people to write reviews or you know do them myself of, of stuff other than the 50 cameras that everyone seems to be talking about 
Yes, because you know, a bit of variety, a bit of mixing it up. So, for instance, you're I'm, I'm currently editing a review you've written for the site on the Fed 4. The Fed it's a four, perfect yeah. example of a camera which is flown under the radar, but is if you want to shoot a, a rangefinder, you don't want to pay. 300 quid for a, a camera that takes L39 lenses, get a Fed 4. For every camera that you think you want, there are some like desirable, like equally good examples that are just waiting to be discovered. Practica cameras. Practica, so the, one of the first cameras I bought that got me on the sort of rabbit hole of film camera and film was a Practica NTL 5B. I love the Practica cameras. Yeah. Practica NTLs are the perfect student camera. Mm -hmm. it, really in are. some ways, I would say they're better than a Pentax K, K1000, which is a great camera, by virtue of where the shutter button is, which is why did more camera manufacturers not put the Perfectly placed. It's absolute Perfectly ergonomic placed. genius. Yeah, it really and is. M42 mount. M42 mount. Superlative lenses. I would say in my top 10 lenses of all time, I've got to say three or four of them are made by Carl Zeiss. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The, 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 you know, the uh, Flectagon is probably my favorite lens of all time. The Flectagon 35. 35 2.4. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Extraordinary lens. Like, whips the ass off most western lenses oh, anything. yeah not spots of anything. a 35 mil lens with a 20 centimeter incredible incredible mm. like same situation with the pancola 50 1.8 the the maya optic 100 2.8 is yes. as good as the takama uh, or Canon portrait lenses. Yeah, of the really same nice lens. Yeah. Really nice. So you know we're we're talking extraordinary lenses, which people have only really recently woken up about. I remember my, buying my first Flectagon for sixty quid, uh, and they sell for two hundred quid now. Why? Because videographers have woken up to. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it's not the. The old film farts like ourselves who no, are no. rising the prices, it's people shooting videos. And movies. And there, movies. There are movie directors who will only use Carl's ICO lenses. They bought out a 29mm uh, 2.8 <laughs> lens, a 50mm 1.8, and a 135 one 2.8 lens. They are absolutely extraordinary lenses, especially the 29 2.8. You're going to buy uh, for people who shoot M42. If you're going to buy one lens and you don't want to spend a fortune, a Pentacon Electric 29 2.8 is it's an oh absolute steal. Do you know what I've used that? And it is really It's nice. an extraordinary lens. Really nice. yeah. It's got a, a proper circular aperture. Yes. Step circle. Yeah. So you, it is a, no wonder the videography and movie crowd have gone for it because it's mm. like the Helios mm. um, yeah, yeah. 44. It's, yeah. it's an absolutely extraordinary lens. And you know, 29mm gives you that cinematic look. Um, you know, favoured by a lot of journalists and street photographers and, uh, in the film days because it gives uh, cinematic scale or if you're shooting it um, uh, shooting for news or reportage journalistic distance yeah, yeah. Uh, which is you know, a very interesting scale to bring to photography. Yes. 29 mil is obviously a, a lot more than the human eye fits into, into our normal field of view. Yeah, yeah. Um, and those, you know, I, I have several of those 29 2.8 lenses. You still see them for as little as 25 pounds. And for what they are, an absolute steal. Stephen has brought me some cameras to show me. The part of his special collection. So, um, so we were talking before about uh, about cameras, and I thought um, I would talk about three different cameras. So, the camera that really started things off for me in terms of 
like going down the rabbit hole of film photography. Right. Um, the camera that you know push comes to shove is probably probably my favourite film camera. And then a, a recent camera that I've discovered that I really like. So these really do cover sort of 20 years of shooting film cameras. Oh, um, no, I'm really intrigued. I'm proper so intrigued. I'm going to start you off with uh, <laughs> with the camera that really picked things off for me. And it just seems to have uh, fallen down the bag. No, there it is. So I'm giving you the, the Lomo LCA. Oh. Which is is the camera that um, really kicked things off for uh, Lomography. So for people who don't know it, it's a, um, it's a Soviet copy of a Cosina camera really? from the, the 1980s. Um, and it was made for, um, at first, it, it wasn't released to the public, it was given away at communist congresses really? in the mid-1980s. Oh my goodness. But I, I bought this example, this very example, in the year 2000 at a mm. uh, camera store not very far away from where we are um, sadly no longer with us but it was a wonderful shop called Clock and Camera on New Oxford oh, Street oh I remember yeah. yes run by these I think they were Afghani guys who were just mm. absolutely wonderful um, and I'd, I'd read about the Lomo camera and I so I want to buy one so this is the camera I bought in 2000 Wow. Now, I, I, it won't show up, seeing as we're shooting in quite low um, low light. But there are an extraordinary number of scuffs on this camera. The 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 nameplate wore away from my thumb or my finger holding. Oh my gosh! So I put this, lots of use. This little pic, uh, badge of the uh, the Soviet um, <laughs> pre-Soviet uh, cruiser Aurora on there. That's uh, pretty cool. But this is a yeah. proper 1986 era Soviet Lomo LCA. Do you know what? I've never, I've heard of these, but I've never actually handled one. They're, they're just wonderful cameras. That is, to this day, um, the camera I reach for when I have the photographic equivalent of um, for, uh, writer's block. It oh, is. It's just such a wonderful camera to use. It has a super saturated, very contrasty, 32 mm lens. So again, you're talking a perfect street photography yeah, lens. Yeah. Um, wow. It is. It, it, this this hasn't got film. In it, it's got it? film in it, but that's absolutely oh, fine. I got I'm plenty sorry. of them. No, I've just it's, shot a frame. It's fine. It, that's it, why you shouldn't drink and do photography, people. <laughs> what these cameras are wonderful for is just capturing as much the atmosphere as like the reality of your daily life. So I often put old slide film that I cross process in here. Okay. And if I, I look back on Lomo shots of summers 20 years ago, they feel like those summers felt. Yeah, yeah. Because the colours are super saturated. They are. They have a wonderful warmth and, and resonance to them. Yes. I think really plays to film photography strengths. Yeah. And you know, unfortunately, now it, it can be harder to find those films. But if you if you put a contrasty colour negative film uh, or a black and white film, because that lens is equally good with uh, black and white. Right, right. If you put something that you know really works well with contrast, yeah, it's just yeah, a yeah. wonderful camera to use. I, I, I spent a summer a few years ago, by which stage I built up quite a collection of cameras, and I was like, I haven't shot with my Lomo for ages, right. so I made it my my project to always have it with me in my bag, or to take it on every trip out of the country I did. Mm, mm. And I just suddenly had this wonderful bunch of images that I shot in 2018. Like, uh, I went to Moldova and Transnistria with it. I went uh, to weddings. Um, I just, yeah, I just absolutely loved the shots that I got with it. It's a really nice size as it well. Is. It's, it's very heavy really for its size. Very heavy. It, yeah, it yeah. It's definitely feels like something from another age. So then we'll get to uh, camera number two, which is um, two. Okay. is the camera that if you were to say, okay, you can shoot with just one camera for a year. This is my favorite 35 millimeter camera to shoot with. Ah. And this camera is the 
Pentax ES2. ES2, which is the last um, screen mount camera that Pentax made. Really? And it's um, mm. aperture priority. Nice. So with um, a certain uh, sort of subset of the Takamar lenses, mm. the SMC Takamars, yeah, yeah. you just set the aperture, put it on auto, and the camera will choose the uh, shutter speed, but it's stepless. So if the if the metering system decides that it's one five hundred and forty third of a second at f two point eight, that's what it chooses. What it does. So it, especially when you're shooting on slide, really, really good. Experience. It's a really, really I wonderful handle. camera. This is Absolutely. a beautiful machine. Absolutely beautiful machine. So a nice, a nice bit of. Um, yeah. And what lens have you got? You. 1. So I've got the 50 1.4, which yeah. is that's also in my top 10 lenses of all time. Look at this, ladies and gents. Oops. That's all right. Is that not a beautiful thing? Look at that. Funny old contacts. I believe that's from, is that the USA version? Yeah, so that, that would have been the, the version that was um, uh, sent into the US. So the ES, ES2s were only made for a couple of years, but they weren't made in small quantities. Something like 200 or 300,000 were made. So it's, it's not a hard camera to find, and it is very repairable. So um, it will often get the, the Pentax squeak, a bit like the Canon A1. That's very repairable, and also the um, the electronics on the ES2 are actually not too bad to repair. The circuit boards are quite repairable. So, um, I have seven or eight of these cameras. They're my travel camera of choice. Oh, that is a beautiful camera. Do you know I didn't know about this? One. This is must be early eighties. Early 70s, 1973. Okay. So a bit of camera geekery. If uh, I, I know you're you're a man who likes his music photography, the, the cover shot of London Calling by The Clash was shot on a Pentax ES2. So I've met the photographer who shot it, Penny Smith. She's still shooting on the camera she shot that picture with, and I've held it. Oh, nice! That is so cool. And another yeah. person who loves the ES2 is Brian May from Queen. Oh, really? Uh, so he ah. still shoots on Pentax ES2 when he shoots Queen. Very um, nice. And so that is a beautiful It's machine. an extraordinary it's camera, isn't it? Really it just is. feels right. Yeah, it, it really does. It has that wonderful top plate that the uh, Spotmatic had, which has all that you need and nothing that you don't. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Really underrated Very nice mark of camera. So my last camera. Um, I thought I would try and encapsulate 20 odd years of shooting with film cameras right. and bring you a camera that um, I only really discovered uh, within the last 18 months but I absolutely love. It's from Ukraine Ooh. and it's the Fed Micron 2. Oh the Micron! So ah, it, it's the Micron yeah. 2 so instead of a, a selenium meter it uh, uses a battery. It, it, Wow. It's the equivalent to cameras like the Konica C35. Yeah, yeah. So you choose um, A, which I think I have a set on, uh, and the, the camera will choose both the aperture and the shutter speed that it thinks uh, it needs. Right. Right. Uh, it has a wonderful Indostar 38mm lens. Ooh, beautifully so saturated. So nicely made, man. Yeah. So yeah, it's a real Beautiful. jewel of Ukrainian um, wow. camera making. Well, now, this is a camera I was not aware of. But yeah, just a, just a wonderful camera. Beautiful thing. Micron 2. Absolutely beautifully made little machine. Very, very nice little Ukrainian camera. Beautiful little lens. Probably really nice on the street, I would think. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. I, um, I actually got this from a, a real, uh, I'm trying to find the right, godfather or guru of the Soviet um, camera world, um, Vladislav Kern, who runs uh, USSRphoto.com, which is a, he's a, a collector. Um, 
we just really wanted to create a place where people who loved Soviet cameras um, could compare and contrast, you know, talk about cameras. He's not a, a film photographer himself, he's just a, more interested in the cameras. Okay. But um, he's just... Uh, Cosmophoto is obviously very interested in Soviet cameras and uh, Vlad has just been such a wonderful resource for, um, for the blog in terms of researching and you know uh, troubleshooting it's like mm. oh, I'm doing an article about this camera have you gotten any yeah I'll take some pictures for you but like just just a what a wonderful wonderful welcoming enthusiastic sort of part of the really cool Soviet camera collecting yeah, fraternity yeah. and I was talking about this um, the other day with uh, some sort of fellow blog um, blog owners, blog editors, and we were all saying it's like it's the Soviet camera um, collectors who seem to be the friendliest. It's really, okay. really odd. Um, the people who who are interested in Soviet cameras are often the most helpful when it comes to like giving you resources or giving you information or like oh I don't have that camera oh I, I have one I'll take some pictures for you you can use one in the book it, it's um, it's interesting how somebody's singing over there can, you, can we call that singing are we going to get a copyright strike <laughs> is there a football game on I don't know I think so. Well, it's all part of the pub atmosphere. Absolutely. Well, you know what? It's been really nice coming to the pub with all of you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been really nice coming to the pub with Stephen Dowling. It's been really nice seeing his cameras in his film. I'm going to shoot this film. I'm going to shoot the flipping heck out of this film and show you how it works in another video. So we're going to showcase both of these films, Agent Shadow 2. Enjoy yourself, my friend! Agent Shadow and Mono. Agent Shadow and Mono. We're going to showcase both these films and we'll show you how they work. And I think they're going to work nicely. Hopefully on your, your cabal of Soviet or East European cameras. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Stephen, it's been really cool meeting you. Brilliant. Thank very, you very nice so to much for the Thank, Thank you for um, making me part of. Somebody's had a drop too much, people. This is London, people. We're in London, don't forget. In the evening, in the summer. This is what happens. So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for inviting me on. I've loved watching various videos about great cameras and lenses on sonography over the years. So, um, yeah, lovely to be part of it for an episode. Okay, check out the Cosmo Photo website, also the YouTube. I've got to thank all of the subscribers, subscribers old, subscribers new, people have been with us ages and ages, people have just joined. Thanks so much, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much to all the patrons who support the channel. This channel, as I've said before, could not do what it does without the support of patrons. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support. Thanks again to Stephen. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Thank you, sir. We'll see you next time for some more xenography. <laughs>